Hello and welcome to another episode of Creative Techniques in which I'm going to show you how to make pretty looking charts and graphs, either for print or animated for video. I've just got some data here from a website called humdata.org and the approach I'm going to show you today is a good way to go if you've got a lot of data. There are ways to do charts and things with motion or building one yourself in Illustrator or Affinity Design or something like that, but if you need to generate it and generate it quickly then you need a spreadsheet or something like that. Uh, Numbers is Apple's spreadsheet, the equivalent of Excel on the Windows side, and it makes good looking graphs. Now, if you download this CSV file, you will, I'll flick to numbers now, you'll get a data file something like this. Now, if you're not really familiar with numbers, you might not uh, know how to do some of these things. And by scrolling down the country list here, you'll see that, in fact, they don't list the countries individually if there are data for particular states. And so if I wanted to chart Australia, for example, I need to go to the row at the end of Australia, add a row below, and then from this cell here, I'm going to need to equals and type sum, just meaning to add, and we drag just straight above that, hit OK, and that's adding up all these nice zeros above there. And then drag this little yellow circle all the way across to the right, and it gives me a total. So that's an Australia-wide total. You could do the same thing for Canada uh, or anywhere else where the data is set up like this. Now, I want actually to use that row of data, so I'm going to leave it selected. But I'm going to also hold down the Command key and then drag in the line of dates up above. Now, this is current data as of today. It's being recorded on the 27th of March, 2020. Um, now, I've got the date selected. I've got the data selected. I'm just going to say Graph. And now you've got 2D and 3D options. There's a few of these which are good and a few which are not so good, but let's go with the bar chart. Or sorry, the column chart. That's the bar chart there. Column chart in just 2D. Now it makes the chart. And that's a horribly scary looking bit of data going up there at the moment. So now that I've got this chart, uh, I can do lots of things with it over here on the right. If you want to make more sense of some of these lower bits of data, you might go to Axis and choose to view this in a logarithmic scale. And if you're not used to reading a log graph in which this is 1, this is 100, and this is 10,000, if I make that a bit taller and uh, break it into four areas there, it's 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. Uh, this is how you can deal with exponential growth. Um, and if you view this in a linear, I mean, you can see these lower bits of data are really very hard to see. And then it's going up in more or less a straight line. Uh, so look, your choice. You've got lots of other options here with series and arranging it. And the, the big option is found under graph. You can change the graph type to any of those other ones that we could have chosen earlier. Now, some of these are really good for video, some are better for print. And I'll show you those in a second. But to get the maximum number of options, I'm just going to copy this graph, Command-C, and I'm going to Command-Tab across to Keynote, make a new document here. And this is the presentation software. All the charting works fine, but it's much better if, case, if you want to do animation. It's also a bit easier for PDF export if you want to do print. Now, I'm going to show you video, so I'm going to go for widescreen. Important, I just want this standard white one, and choose. Now, I don't need any of that. Delete, paste. The chart comes across just fine. Now I'm going to resize, holding Option to make sure both sides resize at the same time. Top as well. Great. Now, editing the graph data is possible. In, in Keynote, you can still add data. For example, if you were going to update this chart every day, you would just need to add in those two columns. And hopefully those numbers don't go up too much more quickly. All right. Now, you've still got all the same options and the same kind of interface here in Keynote. How do we get this exported then? Well, if you want to create a simple file like this that's going to print properly, all you need to do is export to PDF. Now, a PDF here in best quality will be clean. You can export this, and I actually used this on another project recently. You can export this graph as a PDF, bring it into the 
vector graphics or layout software of your choice and it'll be good and you know you could have much 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 more complex data than this now what if you want to make this into something animated you want to build these lines on one after the other then what you want to do is go to animate you can add an effect and if you've got a bar chart like this you might want to do something like dissolve now I'm just going to choose dissolve you don't want all at once probably you probably want by element in series build from first to last let's knock the duration way down and you probably want this build order button here now with the build order we're going to say after previous build leave it on no delay and when we preview that you can see it is bringing this data in Now, with something like this, you might want to just take out a heap of the data first to make it more intelligible. Depends what you're trying to focus on. Uh, again, if you go back to Format, Axis, you could flick this back to a logarithmic. And then when you preview the animation, let's see if we play there, hit the spacebar. Then this could be a useful format for you. All right, I'm going to get out of that. Now, what are the other good formats for presenting this as a graph? Go back to graph. Go to the 2D line. 2D line is been, has been a popular way to present this data. And the animation options, dissolve still works. And if we preview that, then you'll see this is quite a good way to visualize things. And that can work quite well. And again, you could export this to PDF if you just need this for print. Now, one more option here, going back to format. If you go to a 3D line, now 3D lines are easy to uh, put at too great of an angle. And that means it's actually hard to know what on earth is going on. Now, 3D graph can go at different angles. Under axis, you can do linear and logarithmic. Under series, you can add some labels if you want, but it probably won't be very informative at this kind of scale. So under the graph, how deep do you want this graph to be? I can knock it back quite a bit. I can change the lighting style. I can make it super glossy. Um, you've got other options. Do you want the shadow? No, let's lose the shadow. And maybe we'll just leave it like that. Now, you've got different color options, but if you just want to control exactly what color it is, just hit Command-Shift-C shortcut to bring up the color picker and then any color you've got here you can just drag it in that's a quick and easy way to get things colored in keynote okay let's go with that now if we look at animate you can still dissolve but it's not going to be very informative so if you want to do a 3d graph the best option here is to use 3d grow there's a bunch of effects here which are quite useful not all at once by series, build from first to last, build order is fine, let's preview that. How long do we want to take to build this whole thing? Let's amp that time up a little bit, three seconds, preview. So that did work, I'm going to hit play. Now unfortunately it does seem to be building the whole thing first. Um, but it did actually produce the video you're looking for. So if you want to export that video and you want to put it in, you know, a regular video, you can. You can export to a movie. Now, you can go to 720p, 1080p, and if you want 4K, then yeah, just type in the numbers. 3840 by 2160. If you want to go full quality, go ProRes 4444. And if you want transparency as well, you need to do one extra step. So for transparency, click on the background, head to format, and here in background, choose no fill. Now it will look like it is black here in Keynote, but when you export to a movie and you pump in some custom numbers and let's go 3840 by 2160 to ProRes 4444, export with transparent backgrounds is active and it tells you you have to set the background to no fill let's go next i'm going to export that to the desktop let's go transparent graph it shouldn't take too long let's 
Now I'm going to flick across to command to Final Cut. I'm going to hit Command I for import. I'm going to go to the desktop, and I'm going to go to the new transparent graph. I'm just going to import it quickly this way. Here is my transparent graph. I'm not sure why, but I really only want it to start here. So I'm going to hit import to there, output to there, drag it on top of this background I've got here, and there we go. Now if you want that last frame to stay still, I'm just going to hit on the very last frame, so down arrow to go to the end, left arrow to go back, shift H, shift H gives me a hold frame at the end, and I can also similarly put a hold frame at the beginning, and now I've got a graph which will grow over time. Now obviously there's many different ways you can present this graph. Uh, these are just a few. It could be a scatter, it could be line, it could be bar. If you need to get information out there, there are many good ways to do it. Um, if it's good information, please share it. If you're not sure about the information, don't bother with any of this. Just get the data right first. Uh, stay safe, stay isolated, and good luck everyone.